situation taken care of. Now we got ideas. We also got a student. <laughs> Amen. Well, we can hear some good preaching tonight. Amen. Amen. Been missing that pastor experience. Well, I'm not able tonight, but I'll try to be, I'll try to be prepared. Do whatever you can, uh, brother. We get somebody to help set up the communion Sunday. I think we'll have communion the last day of the, this year in honor of our Lord and Savior. We meant to have it in Christmas, but the situation not too long. We're getting stronger. I'm just burdened. I, the devil's trying to fight every which way you go. Mm -hmm. We can't give in, folks. We can't. We've got too much to do. We're talking to the Lord this evening. And uh, we got to pick up, put up, stand up, and speak up. Amen. 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 Too many souls in the balance. It's time to quit. But anyway, go ahead, brother. Ready to lead us in a song and uh, whatever the Lord does it on your heart. Is there any other prayer requests right here? Got any other prayer requests? Always remember us in prayer and uh, remember Grace's boyfriend and his family, the Rackleys. Uh, Davis. And Davis. She's a Davis. Well, Davis, the Davis family also. Davis family. Yeah. That's actually... His mom, his dad's Rackley. Okay. Well, they just remember them in prayer. And also remember Greg's cousin. Um, Alan Ward, his uncle, his dad's the one that just passed away recently. Johnny, uh, his wife, his cousin's wife, Alan, is uh, found out that she has cervical cancer. So just remember her in prayer. Amen. He's feeling like really depressed because the whole family's turned against him, blaming him for his dad's death because he was there all that day. And he's blaming himself for sleeping all day. But, uh, there's a lot going on there, and he just he's feeling really depressed. And I've been ministering to him and talking to him and preaching to him, and and uh, he just he's really wanting to put God first in his life. I can really feel that and by what he's saying and everything. And y'all just pray that God keep working in his life and God turn that boy around. remember him he's not feeling the best tonight and uh, remember uh, Tom and Annie and uh, her situation there and uh, remember Jamin and Crystal and uh, remember me I need the Lord's help you know uh, and uh, that's the only one I can uh, go to. And we're we're trying to get that prayer list together. Uh, Chesty, you've got the names. You I got, told her I finished them. Finally finished them. Got them converted over. I told her the book. cats took a now, dive on the box. Yeah, and they all hit the floor, and she had to go and rearrange them. But now we got to get them in a format where. We can just call these names out. These former members and members and people that we burden for, and I believe God's going to honor that. We put something so. together. He always says, and, and uh, I could really see him doing the work there. And uh, I believe I, well, I want to get that list out there so everybody can see. Hey, listen, there's a place in the church where people are actually praying for people. And we might, might put something on the website with our prayer request to email us. That'd be a, That's a good idea. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Yeah. And uh, we'll uh, bring them before the church at least once a week. That'd be we wonderful. Use, uh, use that uh, church email, use one that you've got all the time. I know the names 
get so vast and there's so many of them. And, uh, me and Randy used to go up to the top of this mountain and pray yeah. on top of this mountain. And uh, they had this little prayer box. And they'd drop all their requests in it. And then all the men would just get around and just ask God to move upon these names that's in this box here. And I tell you, God would come down. It was like heaven on top of the mountain. Just men be running around praising God. Dark and pitch black as it could be. You can't see a thing. And they'll be running through trees and stuff and not hit a one. <laughs> Tell me God's not in that. Amen. 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 Uh, you know, I know he's able. And I, I really believe that God's going to honor this. And the devil is really trying to fight it. So let's pray hard that we get this out there. Get it going, get it moving. Amen. Yes. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the day that you've given us, God. Lord, I'm so unworthy of all that you do, God, and everything that you're able to do. But God, I thank you for your sacrifice and the wonderful things that you've done for me in my life and my family, God. You're so worthy of all the praise and honor and the glory. God, we got so many petitions and so many requests, God. Uh, we got the family and the brothers and the sisters and the mothers and the dads, God. And, and Lord, we got so many burdens uh, for each and every one of our former members and members, God, that you just get a hold of them, God, and do a work in their life. Lord, I know that you're able. And God, I just ask you to put a special touch in upon the pastor and his family, God. We lift them up to you, God, that we know that you could do a work in his life and we, that you could just reach down and give him that healing and put him back where he's behind this sacred desk, God, and doing the work you'd have him to do, God. And Lord, we're going to lift him up to you and ask you to touch him and do, a, do that work that you have him to do, God, and, and do that work in his life. Lord, I just want to plead the blood from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, God, have a work in his life. And oh, I ask for that you just touch Miss Jean tonight, God, that you just reach down and, Lord, that you just uh, touch that physical body, God, and that you just heal her, Lord, and just do the work that you have her to do, God. And, Lord, we want to ask, Father, for each one of these petitions that we brought up before you, that you would just move the only way that you can, God. We ask your perfect will in your way in all things in the Lord Jesus Christ, holy name we do pray. Amen. 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 If you want to grab your hymnals, we'll turn to page 256. Well, I like singing the old faithfuls like old mate, amazing old life. Amen. Stand if you want. Yeah. 
Let's have fellowship. Go ahead, Grace. I can't. Here. I will ever be true. It shame and reproach gladly. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away. Where is glory forever? I will cling to the old rugged throne and exchange it someday for a Bibles. Who's got Bibles tonight? Amen. Everybody First, I got a Bible. Go ahead and open it to Psalms yep. 51. This is what he's been having laid on my heart. And, you know, I had a couple other things in the back burner, but you always think in one thing, and then you get up here and it got to that. That ain't what it was. No, that too. This is what, what it has to be. And this is what he laid on my heart, Psalm 51. Because it, it's something that is true to me because of my walk and my failure as a Christian. There's a lot of things the enemy tries to put in our path to try to trip us up. Right. Another Bible up here. But God is able to restore yes, us, each and every one of us, <coughs> if we'll be willing to put our eyes on him. Let's go ahead and read from the God's blessed holy word. If you're able to stand, stand. I believe we should pay reverence to God's word tonight. Amen. If you're not, God understands. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, loving kindness, according unto that multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I have spoke, I have shapen, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shall make me to know wisdom. Purge me with his and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Dear God, I just ask you to bless to read your word of light to our hearts, God. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you tie me mind across. Yes. God, I don't want to do nothing without your power and your unction, God, without your guidance, God. I don't want to do nothing of myself but everything according to your will. God, I just pray, Father, that you give me the words to speak, God, that you have for each and every person in here, God. Lord, that we'd have a desire to put you first in our life, God, and truly have a hunger for your righteousness, not ours. Ever have your way in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. 
I like how you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. I like how, how that David wrote this. First of all, David was uh, just transgressed really big in the eyes of God. He, and of course, all sin is sin to God perfectly. He can't look at it. It's evil and he can't, he has to turn his back from it. But David just committed a horrible sin where he had a, a, a done an adulterous thing or actually sent out a, a, one of his best friends to die to take his wife Bathsheba. And I believe that was her name. Is that not right, brother? And uh, he desired her. He seen her one day. And that's how sin sort of enters in. Well, he's just up on the roof one day and seen her bathing from a distance. He seen it. And he had a desire. It, it, it wasn't nothing at first. It's just an innocent little glance. But then something started taking root in David's life. I'm going to tell you right now, something's the enemy knows how to throw things into your minds. Fiery darts. To get us separated from God. And you don't, I know that God can turn things around through His good and His glory. Yes. But those things that can easily beset us, the enemy has been doing it for thousands of years. And thousands of years, he's been tripping people up and trying to get them off the right path. But David, he was up there one day and he glanced and seen this. And he seen this woman and he started lusting after her. Pondering at it. He, he, got, he started thinking, I gotta have this. How can I have it? Then he started acting and moving. You know, when we the, the thought enters in, we can cast it down. God says, if anything exceeds a, a his glory and his majesty, if anything goes up above it, we're to cast it down. I can't remember the exact scripture right now, but I God will give it to me. I know he will. We can cast it down. Anything that it see uh, uh, the imagination. What's that verse, Pastor? Uh, I'm trying to get it. Imaginations of the heart. Yes. I can't bring it up right now either. But the enemy works like that. Tries to stop us from saying things. I'm going to tell you right now. There's things that stood up against us, and God don't want those things to be foremost in our mind. And David started pondering on these things and started imagining on these things and started moving on these things. You know, there at first it wasn't sin when, when he first saw it, but when he started pondering on it and chewing on it and started meditating on it, then it becomes sin. Because he started conceiving it in his heart. Right. And when a man can see something in his heart to think about doing it, he's done committed to sin in God's eyes. You already moved yourself out of God's grace and moved yourself out of God's will. Let me say that. God's divine will. He has a desire for us to walk the straight and narrow. He has a desire for us to put him first in all things. And when we take our eyes off of him, it's easy to let things go astray. And when we start pondering these little thoughts that get stoned in our heads, it's easy for us to, to get stumbled up. But God let David turn it all around right here. He he come out to come before God and he got sent the man of God to David and said, Hey David, you messed up. You done something wrong. And he said, and David gets down and he he he, he said, Forgive me, God. Have mercy on uh, upon me. Oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto thy multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgression. That means cast it as far as the east is to the west. God is able. He said if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and us from all unrighteousness. God is able to cleanse those transgressions out of our life. But we gotta confess daily those things, those thoughts that get stuck in our head. We start pondering on it, and it starts stopping us from doing the will of God. You know, I, let me give you another example in my life. I have a desire to read God's Word every day at a certain time and a certain amount of Scripture. I don't want to read God's Word, 
but things start to try to come in and try to hinder that. Yes, sir. Tries to stop that from happening. The enemy don't want us to put the whole armor of God on, and that is the Word of God. If if you break that down in Ephesians, like Brother Randy said the other day, if we just read that, God's Word is His armor. That's how He puts it on us. The faith. The reading, the hearing, faith now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, it's all the word. And if we're saturated in the word, God's putting that armor on us. So we'll be equipped to withstand against the evil one and done all to stand. Let's go ahead and read that right there in Ephesians chapter 6 real quick. Uh, just another Another glance at it, just so we get it fresh in our mind. I'll read it to you. You don't have to flip, but if you want to, more than welcome to. General Electric Power Company. God's always allow me to remember that like that. In Ephesians, it, those are the skull bills, 1255. And it says, finally, uh, 1255, page number, uh, chapter 6, verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand against the wiles, the trickery, the deception of the devil. God wants us to know his word that when the enemy throws in and the enemy likes using pieces of the word of God to trip us up. He'll misquote it. He'll leave part, certain parts out and it'll sound, sound good to us. But the enemy wants us to not put God first in our lives. And David's sitting here praying. He's saying, Dear God, have mercy upon me. Dear God, according to thy loving kindness and according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. He's seeking God. And he's putting God first. He's wanting God to be first 100% in his life. And God, you know what? I believe God is going to do a work there. And we'll see that he does. He says, wash me thoroughly with thine, uh, from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. That's right, Brother Greg. That's right. There's no remission of sins. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for us to wash away all of our sins. And you know what? All the only thing we got to do is just ask him. And he's willing and wants to do the work in our lives. You know, let me just stop right here for a second and just tell you something that happened to me. I have to sit down. Excuse me for that. No, Forgive sir. Me. You okay. got ahead, brother. Something happened a long time ago, and I was on fire for God, and I had a desire for God to be first in all aspects of my life, and I was truly seeking Him, was truly desiring Him to be first. And I had a desire to do a work here at Grace Baptist Church and be a light here. But the enemy tried; to, he come in and tripped me up. Yes, sir. he did. He knocked the props out from under me. And it was the last thing I ever seen. It was with, with one of my brothers that I that I considered a true brother in Christ. Yes, sir. The enemy used that person to just crush me. I never even wanted to look at Grace Baptist Church again. But God had other plans. Yeah. It wasn't the church, brother. No, it wasn't the church. And it's easy for us to get vengeful and wrathful and, and, and thinking of things, but you know, I, I wanted to come back myself many times, but God wasn't able to. The enemy still had it, had it, he still wanted to stop me. Every time I was wanting to come back, I hear I heard the story. Hey, so and so's there, and and it would stop me from coming. I don't want to go into detail because there's some things that's ha that happened that will that's embarrassing and to certain individuals. I don't want to do that. I, I want to lift God up. Amen. I don't want to lift up the enemy. Amen. I just want to tell you how he tripped me up. So listen, 
Guys, every one of us can be tripped up. That's right. You're right. And it's usually the last person that we ever think would trip us up. Was It's the one that lets us down. I love this brother. He crushed me. He's crushed too right now, but Yeah, he sure is. And God showed me that. And that's what brought me back. And I started thinking, you know, God, you're doing a work in my life. You healed me from a, from something they said I should die from. That's right. I'm supposed to have been dead by now. Amen, I'm not supposed brother. to be here, according to the doctors. God had other plans. That's right. God had other plans. <coughs> not me. Amen. He is able. When I decided to put him first and decide and say, hey, listen, God, I know where you want me to go. Don't, don't get me wrong. God has, God has put me here. I know that. I know that I'm here for a reason. Amen. And, and that's the, maybe draw the straw. Go away, I want to put God first in my life in all aspects. Amen. You ask my family, what am I doing the time I get up to the time I go to bed? Not bragging on myself, but it's God. Amen. Put that desire in my heart. Yes. I mean his word. Amen. And if I'm not in his word, I'm stud I'm I'm in reference book studying about the word. Amen. And if I'm not doing that, I'm praying. Yes, my sir. wife come up to me thinking I'm falling asleep. Say, Greg, you need to wake up. And I said, No, I'm not. I'm, I'm Meditate. Leave, leave me alone, little, little kid. <laughs> You know, she worries about me. I know, I know she's concerned Good about me. I know that. But, you know, God put that desire in my heart. He set a, a fire there. And only he could do that. Put a desire for you to want to read your word like that and put a desire in you to want to put him first. Let me tell you something. Every person in here, you cannot imagine what God can do for you if you put Him first in your life. Amen. What He's wanting to do. Well, I want this person saved, and I, you know, you know what? If you get your life right, God might be able to use you to get to that person. Amen. Right. Look at me. Now take me and throw me down, and look at Jesus. Yes. Because I'm nothing. He's everything. I like the way old John the Baptist said it. He said he must increase and I must, must decrease. decrease. In all things. Jesus died on the cross for our sin right. and paid it in full. Amen. Now we'll read here in in the, the Psalms here. There's a perfect outline for a prayer to put God first in our life and, and, and that's why I want to read it. So we'll have a guideline, a prayer that we can pray, say hey God listen we sin daily, we let him down daily church but if we, if we confess our sin, he said he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to what? Cleanse us from all A L L all unrighteousness. Not part of it, not halfway, but all. But it starts. We've got to confess. To who? Not to man, not to me, not the pastor. To who? Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus. That's the only way. Jesus said, Verily, well, I say unto thee, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. He's the only way. He's the only truth. And he's the only life worth living. We get all worried about different things in our life and you know, these little obstacles like was put in my life tried to trip me up and try to stop me from doing things for God. 
and, and you know, I, I felt like I was broken into many pieces, but God's got the super glue that can mend anything. He's got the super glue that can put any mess up back together. It might look hopeless in our eyes. He sure did to them doctors looking at me. When I see my pulmonologist again, that one that seen me up here at Catawba, he, he about turned white in the face, didn't he, Chad? Mm-hmm. You know why? He never expected to see me again. He thought I'd done been buried and dead and gone. He, he, he thought that, you know, this is impossible. I was at that point. And I believe God allowed me to get to that point for me to get to this point. Yes, sir. For me to get to the point where he can bring me back and restore me. You know, sometimes things has got to happen for those people to get, some of us are just a little more stiff-necked than others, and God's got to allow things to happen and uh, circumstances to come up in our lives. But God wants us all to put him first in all aspects. Sure. Let's read this, 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 this prayer that David, after committing such a wretched act, and God was able to cleanse him. And, and to forgive him and put him back and he says have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness you know he is a loving God for God so loved the world how, how, how much more loving is that that he gave his only begotten son you know he gave us the most precious gift and that's what old Christmas is all about Jesus Christ come by virgin birth he come to save us. He come to, to bring us to God. And it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. We know he's a loving God. Yes. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. We already had God's word on it. God said it is finished. It's done. You can bank on it. God said he's going to forgive you. He'll forgive you. That's just trusting him. So, well, God can't forgive me. My sin, this, this is too bad. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Oh, he, he, he killed Christians. He, he persecuted the church. Yes, sir. No, God showed up one day and said, Saul, Saul, why dost thou kick against the priest? Yes, sir. Why are you going against me? Why are you going against going against my will? Yes. You know what? There's a little thing happened on the road to Damascus. All got right with God. Amen. Amen. Jesus showed up. That's right. And turned a tormentor into a soul winner. That's right. Turned a church ripper and Christian slayer into a builder of churches and restorer of Christians. That's right. Took someone that was so wretched and so against God and put him back. Put him on the right path where Jesus Christ was foremost in his life. And I believe truly that this man, Paul, loved God in all aspects in his life. I do too. You know what? Paul even had infirmities. He had a thorn in the flesh. I don't know exactly what that was. There's people that speculate what that was, but I don't want to speculate. I just want to say I know he had an infirmity. He prayed God to remove it, and God did. That's something he had to live with. Some believe it might have been eyesight because he had uh, one of the dear brothers later on the uh, pen uh, 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 book in the Bible, believed he was going blind. You know, I don't know for sure. There's still speculation. But he had an infirmary, infirmity. He prayed to God to, to remove it. God didn't. You know what? God knows all things. He knows what we need in our life and what we don't need. He knows that, hey, listen, you could do just as much like this 
as you ever could if you trust him and believe him and take him at his word. You know what? He is so able to restore each and every one of us physically, mentally, spiritually. But it has to be his will. You know, that's what the Lord Jesus prayed more than anything. And that's our prime example. Is Lord, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Not mine, but thy will. Yes. Lord, take this cup from me, but not my will, but thy will be done. You know what? God didn't take that cup from him. He died on the cross for my sins. And you know what? Every time I let him down, that's another mark I believe he took. You know, I, I let him down so much, church, and I know God is able. Yes. Because he did, did it in my life. He could do it for you. You think you're close to God, but God, God's got so much more he wants for you. You think you're all right. Trust me. You're not all right if you think you're all right. Amen. Don't be satisfied for where you are. For Be satisfied for what God can do for you. That's right. That's exactly right. Exactly. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. You know what? I believe God did it right then. Amen. It was immediate. But he goes on and prays. Listen. He says, For I acknowledge, and he goes in, my transgressions. And he, I believe David sit there and called him out and said, God, I know I, I let you down. I know I fornicated against you, but he did it to God. He said, God, I know that I've done this and, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And, my, and, and be clear when thou judgest. God, I know I've done it. Your judgment's right. Your judgment's true. You know what? He slew a lot of Israelites that day. But God's hands was stayed. I believe that is at a meal. Was stayed. Stopped the judgment of God. I believe right when David got right with God, I believe that the, the, the ministers went out and, and said that God's hand judgment was stayed. And it was. He said, God, why are you taking this on, on to the, the, the children of Israel? Why are you taking it on them? I'm the one that let you down. You know what? David was the king. He was an example. And God had to get a hold of him the way God can get a hold of him. He had the heart of God. And he loved the people. And God, he started seeing them people fall. You know what? David got on his knees so quick and said, God, have mercy on me. Yes, yes. He had the heart of God. And you know what? God loves us that much. He sees us mess up. It, it crushes him. It hurts him. He wants us to put him first in all aspects. You know what? Let's go on and read this. He didn't. Sidetrack. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee. Thee only have I sinned. What church? I sit here and confess before you today, but you know, I did let the church down. And I ask your forgiveness. Amen. That's all I ever see. Yes. You know what? Because he is able. He is so able. Is he not? Do we not believe that? Do you believe God is able to forgive us and to cleanse us and to restore us and put us back on the right path? put you in the path that he wants you to go, not the path you want to go. You know, when you got sin in your life, your windows are all fogged up and and there's, you can't see. 
where you're standing, let off where you're going. You're you're in a dangerous position because that could be a cliff right there, or there could be a a jack hammer or whatever could be right here, just ready to take you right out. David said, I'm but one step away from death. He knew that. He said, I'm a mortal man. I'm but one step away from death. Did he not, Pastor? No. no one step between me and death. Between me and death. There you go. Against thee, thee only, verse 4, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified in that when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You might think, I'm alright. I'm a good person. Let me tell you. For all double L's there. A-double L's. All, every one of them. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. For all of our sins, there is filthy rags and all. You know, I believe that's in Isaiah. Taking us like the wind, he's taking us away. You know, there's so many things when, when you don't have God in your life. You're in a blind area. You can't see. You know, before I got saved, even before I got saved, I used to listen to people talk about the Word of God, and it was just confusing. I remember the, the exact verse of Scripture that got me more than anything was, I am the vine, you are the branches. I could not grasp a hold of that for nothing, and I wanted to. John 15. John 15, that's right. I wanted to grasp that. I wanted to understand it, but I couldn't. You know why? Because I was in a dark room. And I couldn't understand it. You know why? For the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness of them. You cannot understand it if you're walking in darkness. you got to have the Spirit of God in your life to understand the Word. I'll tell you what. The first thing I did when I got saved, well, not the very first thing, first thing I did, I went and started telling other people about Jesus. Amen. Started saying, hey, you know what happened to me? I just got saved. You know Amen. what? I started giving out gospel tracts and yes. I started telling big people about Jesus immediately. Amen. But let me tell you something. I, I picked up that Bible. I had a desire to read that word. I flipped open to John. I started reading it. And it started talking to me. God did. God started talking to me. The God that created the heavens and earth. That formed every star. That every speck of dust. Spoke it into existence. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. Without him was anything made that was made. All things. Wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us yeah. personally. And you know what? He is so justified. And whenever we are walking in that dark room, I take that out a little bit. I believe it's going to be okay. When we are lost or not got God in our life, and we're not saved, not born again, unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. John chapter 3. God's got me on that. Let's just flip to it right quick. John chapter 3. And we'll read a couple of verses out of that. Jesus there is talking to uh talking to a well, first of all, he's talking to each one of us. But uh, Scripturally, he's talking to a, a leader of the Jews, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And there was this, this, this ruler of the Jews was secretly going to Jesus by night. And he said, let's read it. John chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. 
and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do us the miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's now. That's here. That's right now. That's that, 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 that walk with Jesus. You cannot see it. You cannot understand it. That is the kingdom of God. Right now, that's the work that God wants to do in Pastor Lloyd Jones' life. In the work he's doing. The kingdom of heaven. You, you, you'll read that in other places of the scriptures talking about the, the future reign of Jesus' reign here on earth. Physical reign. His kingdom set up on earth. Is that not right, brother? Yes. So John chapter 3, we'll read on just a few more verses. And he said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can these things be? Can a man be born when he is old? He's starting to question. He can't grasp it. He can't understand it. He can't quite get a hold of it. You know why? Because he's not there yet. He's, he's, not, he's not got God in his life. He's just seeking God. He's there sitting, talking to the Word made flesh. God spoken in the Word. The Word of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Talking to Him face to face. God in the flesh. And He's sitting there telling Him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born, he cannot uh, born, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and now here's the sound thereof, but you can't tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth for the one that is born of the Spirit. Now Nicodemus had trouble grasping a hold of that. Natural man can't grab a hold of it. And I couldn't grab a hold of it, but when I started reading John that day, those words started jumping out at me. You know, I didn't understand everything, but God was talking to me. And, and that's how it works. He just he talks to you through his word. It's his word. It's his spirit. Word. He talks to us. And he's talk, he was talking to me. And, and uh, things I, I couldn't understand before, I could finally start understanding. Not, but the, the main thing is, I finally understood John chapter 2. I am the vine, you are the branches. It started making sense to me. Yes. I couldn't grab a hold of it before. When I put Jesus first in my life and I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in my own trailer, number, I believe number five off of Highway 10, I said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. You know, he showed up there. No one had to tell me. There was, there was a couple preachers just standing around talking about Jesus and the Spirit showed up and heavy conviction fell on me. I, I was in my the floor before they could even, they would look around saying, God's here to save someone. I said, it's, it's me. I lifted my hand and I believe right then when I lifted my hand, God saved me. Amen. Because I knew he was there to save me and I was already there on my knees. I wanted him first in my life. I desired it. And you know what? I was born again. Yes. Not by something I did. The only thing I had to do was accept what God's already done. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. Yes. It's a gift of God, not of works. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> It's God's work. It's already been finished. Jesus died on that cross. Perfect in every way. Becomes sin for us. Cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. We become a curse. He becomes sin. And you know what? 
God hates sin so bad. He had to turn away from his only begotten son. He had to turn away and he said, God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why hast thou forsaken me? God can't look at it. I, I'm going to pray and, you know, I'm going to keep living like a, God don't work like that. Got to get right first before God can answer your prayers. And I believe God used back, we'll flip back to 51. God had me say what I believe he wanted me to say in Psalms in uh, John chapter 3. Let's read Psalms. Again, I want to finish reading this. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity. Verse 5, uh, 51, 5. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You know how that comes, guys, people, folks, church. The word. The word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, the word is truth. It's a stabilizer. It's a strengthener. It's a, it's a grounder. It's something you can count on. You can walk on. It's the word of God. You can take him at his word. Multiple promises there. <coughs> we have so much so much that God wants for us. We have so much that God has a desire for us if we'll just let him be first in all aspects. That's right. My heart breaks. Things that's happening right now in Grace Baptist Church. God's in control. God is. It breaks my heart. I know what God can do for, it, for this church, and I know what God wants to do for this church, and I believe God has showed the pastor what God wants for this church. But people, got to put the word, let the word be first in our lives. And that's what David right here said, God, give me that wisdom. Give me, give me that. He said, you desire truth in the inward parts. He desires that from us. His truth. And there's a way that seemeth right unto the man. But the end thereof is the way of life. You know what that is? Anybody know what the end of your way is? Yeah. Death. Right. For the wages of sin is death. <laughs> but the gift of God. You, why, why, why are you saying that? Because we were conceived in it. Whenever Adam and Eve committed that first sin in the garden, we're all become blanketed under that sin. That sinful nature had separated us from God. And guess what? We were born in sin. But when Jesus died on the cross, he gave us a way to be born again into his kingdom. Wakened up into the kingdom of God become children of God we need to let him be first in all aspects behold I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold thou desires truth verse 6 and then we're parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom We, we read that last time I was up here and you know God is the beginning the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and if we truly want to see God and put him first in our lives you know what we put, start putting this word God will put that very in you you'll start seeing God for what he truly is and guess what? God will start revealing things to you and start opening things up to you that only he can do. Not, not me, not, not no one else. You know what? I'll be studying and I'll pray and 
I'll come in and gotta have the preacher or gotta have another Christian say something and it'd be backing up what he's showing me and he'll confirm it and and then I'll come in and God has just opened my eyes to things and teach me things and God wants that for each and every one of us. He wants to talk to us. He wants to teach us and guide us. He wants that truth to be in us. Amen. And he wants us to have that desire for his truth Amen. to be in Amen. us. You know what? Another reason I like this prayer so much and this psalm so much, David had to hire heart of God. So anything I read about David, I always keep that in mind and say, listen, this man, even though he did the things he did, he still had the heart of God. Did he not, brother? And he's a prime example. If we want to have the heart of God and God's heart, and God's love, and God's will, and God's desire, his true heart's desire, You know what David just wanted God first in his life. He wanted to worship God. He wanted God to be first. He let God down. And God, you know, let, let things happen in his life from there on out. He had to, to put up with things that he should have never had to put up with because he let God down. He had to put up with it. The sword never left his house after that day. He could have had peace. He could have had it. But because of decisions that he made on, on a thought that was told in his head, in one incident, it stopped God's peace from being manifested in his life. But guess what? We are under grace now. And God's peace can be for us all under grace. Every one of us, God's peace. God wants that peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Because why? He trusteth in thee. If we're trusting, he can bring that peace to our lives. He desires us to have that peace. Verse 6. Then to verse 7, we're going to read on, try to get through this. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with his, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. I'll tell you right now, you need the water and you need the blood you need the word and you need Jesus because it's not saying we need to put Jesus first in our lives I don't know if there's anyone here not saved but God knows your heart Yes, sir. God knows where you truly stand don't base it on some man's prayer that or something that happened long ago but base it on your own relationship with God where you stand God knows your heart. I want you to examine yourself right now. Take a look at your own heart. Look at what David did. This, this look at this prayer. He, he seek God. He wants God first in his life. And I want you to look at your own heart right now. And ask God to cleanse you. You know what he can do? God is able Make me to hear joy and gladness. You know what? That, that comes when God's first in your life. That joy and gladness. He's able to bring it to us. Joy and gladness. That the bone that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide that face from my sin and blot out all my transgressions, mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Verse 10. A right spirit within me. He had a desire to want God to, to put God first in his life. He had a desire that he wanted that spirit of God to guide him. He wanted that, that right spirit. Not the spirit, my spirit, but 
God's spirit, God's will. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Let me tell you right now, he's not going to take his Holy Spirit from us. We have it with promise right now. That's, that's under the law. They had to worry about that then. We don't have to worry about that now. We're under grace. God's got those that's born again and he's got us hedged about. But let me tell you, you can quench the Spirit. You can upset the Spirit by disobeying. I know I have. But I know God, he, he forgives me. Because I confess it. And I know that he's able to do a work in each and one of, in, in every one of our lives if we'll just be willing to put him first in all aspects. And then right here, he said, restoring me the joy of thy salvation. If we truly want it, God will give it to us. You know, some of us might have lost that joy along the way. The joy of being saved. And that's what sin will do. Sin will try to rob that from you. Why? It makes you less effective when you're not kind of the joy of, the joy of God in your life. You don't want to do things for God. You get in the, 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 the seat of do nothing. You don't want to do nothing. You just want to let things be. But God can restore that joy and bring it back to you if you have a desire. And he's sitting there asking. He said, God, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold with uh, me with thy free spirit. Now, like this last one, this is where I'm going to stop right now. He said, then I, will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. I'm going to stop there. God done the work in his life. And then, what did he promise? That God, you can restore my joy. And I, you know what? Sinners are going to be saved. Souls are going to come back over, come to you, God. And you know what? I believe that's exactly what happened. Many a people look at David's life today. There's many people that's heard the story of David in their life, and many people have heard the different stories of David. And you know what? They're still teaching people to this day. They're teaching me. I don't know about you. But I believe he had a desire that so people would put God in first in their life and walk close to him. Pastor, I'm going to turn it over to you now. With their heads bowed and their eyes closed, uh, we don't know what this night holds, but I do know who holds this night. Amen. And Lord, we, uh, we pray for those God that's been going through the trying times and I guess we've all come through part of that Lord we want to stop tonight and, and uh, ask that you search our hearts that you find no evil in our lives that we might be using yes. vessels feed it to the masters and Lord uh, we ask you to pick us up and and help us, Lord, to, to get up and keep serving you. Lord, I, I, I failed you. I, I'll be honest, Lord, the devil tried to put a lot of doubt in my life and going through all this surgery and all, Lord. And as I told you this afternoon, Lord, I, I won't be found faithful in all that I do. You said you'd never put more upon me than I can bear, and even without a way of escape, it's back to you. I pray for the sick and the shut-in and Irene Walker. And I, I pray for those in, uh, in the nursing homes, God. And, uh, and I pray for those in the hospitals, Lord. And so many. I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful to be at your house tonight. And, 
uh, take care of the sick and the afflicted, Lord, and uh, Miss Jean and, and uh, Greg and, and me and, and Miss Dare and all of uh, them right here tonight. You know exactly what our needs are. And Lord, I, I, I know you know. And, and Lord, we just plead your blood, God. Would you, would you pour out your power upon us and let us be usable vessels? And, and Lord, may we have done all to stand, just stand for your glory and honor. Your praise. Thank you for those nails that was driven into your hands. Thank you, Lord, for that, that nail that nailed that, uh, those feet to the cross. Thank you for that cat of nine tails that beat you and bludged in the body of our Lord and Savior. And all that was because of me. If I'd been the only one ever saved, you'd have did it all. Just for me. God, not my will anymore. God, your will, your direction, your leadership, especially give us souls in the labor. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Have in mercy as we go, safety to our homes and back. In Christ's name again we thank you. Amen. Amen.